watching your former uh, Sonics play right now. Oh, so. uh, yeah. I'm actually in Portland, so I'm a, I'm a Blazer guy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I like the Blazers. I like yeah. Blazers. I'm Because my personal beliefs, the NBA, especially your guy, LeBron, I, I don't question really like how he's gone about some of the stuff we're dealing with. Like, I'm not for the stuff that's going on. I just don't like how LeBron's gone on about it. Right, right, yeah. And that's I, can, I think a lot of people feel that way. Yeah. And, I mean, the Blazers are out. I'm such a baseball guy. Like that—that's my thing. Baseball and football. I mean, I got Brett behind me. I'm Packer, Packer Mariners fan. And the Blazers. I always want to go to Lambeau Field. Maybe one day. It's cool. I've been to Lambeau twice. Like freezing my ball. That's how I want to go. Yeah, that's what I've always wanted. We went in like '99. That's an experience you have to have to go to Lambeau Field. Yeah, Lambeau's one of them. Wrigley was one of mine, and I got to go to Wrigley when I was a kid. Um, the other one is I want to go to Fenway. I think Fenway is like one of the ones. That'd be cool. Yeah. Have you, cause you've mostly been in the NL, right? So you haven't got to play up in Fenway. I haven't played in Fenway. I played at Wrigley. That was okay. a lot of Wrigley twice. That's what I've heard. Cause, uh, Darwin Barney's a local guy here and my stepdad umpires the adult leagues and Darwin still plays in it. And so I've got to ask Darwin that question last summer and he's like, Wrigley's awesome. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. He lot just fun. hated all the day games. Yeah, that that is a pain in the ass. Especially because you're such night owls, and then you have to go. Oh, and, dude, this season, you are a night. I mean, there's time. I went to bed the other night at like five thirty. See, and that, yeah, it's yeah. You definitely turn into a night owl. Yeah, because before, like before, I like my brain disorder. Eighteen months ago, I was a bartender, so I get being like the night owl t- type of living and that kind of stuff. Right. And it's so hard to switch it over. All right, so I'm gonna get into that intro. <sighs> All right. Welcome, everybody, to Just Mitchin. I'm Mitch Mitchie. I'm your host, and I have a very special guest, Minnesota twin, Lane Adams. Lane, how are you doing? I'm good, Mitch. How are you doing, my man? I'm doing good. Just watching a little baseball, talking to you right now. Um, how's, how's Minnesota? Like, what brought you to um, go choose the twins this year in free agency? Uh, well, all negotiations out off offseason, they just ended up being the best spot for me. Um, as far as you know, situational teams, uh, where they're at in their organization, or where they're at in their uh, like in the big league side, you know, they're competitive, so that usually helps the guys like me be on competitive teams. Uh, but yeah, it's been great, man. Uh, being here has been, you know, it's been a real like blessing in a way. I know as far as wild as twenty twenty's been, uh, I've really had to take the time to uh, really work on. You know, some things that I probably wouldn't normally get to work on throughout the season. So you really get to really get to like focus in on and really work on some some uh, some things that, you know, that you really don't get to really dive into throughout the course of the year. Right. Because so. what have you been focusing on? Because you're, you're known to be a speed guy, right? Uh, right now I'm focusing on uh, lim- like trying to cut down on strikeouts. I mean, okay. Because, you know, today's game, it's all about pitches are always valued on swing and miss, swing and miss. You have swing and miss stuff. Well, if uh, they value swing and miss, it means they probably, you know, value players who don't swing and miss that much offensively. So I'm trying to cut down the swing and miss and uh, and, the, and the strikeout numbers. And, you know, being here without, without keeping the scoreboard stats, uh, you're able to kind of really buy into that process of working on stuff and uh, really, you know, being – giving allowing yourself to be vulnerable in these situations, which, you know, you never want to feel vulnerable in a, in a live game, but, and, but you know, sometimes you need to take those chances and this is the perfect environment for, uh, for players to be able to, you know, experience things and, you know, make themselves a little vulnerable. Cause it's like an expert extended spring training, basically. Right. But you just have the top prospects and a bunch of vets. Right. 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 It's, it's, it's a extended spring training, but the talent's really, really, really good. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's been a lot of fun though. It's been like I said, uh, it's and you know I can't. I'd be really hard pressed to you know to see in another team organization as being as, as accommodating as the Twins have been and the way they've handled this whole thing with COVID and you know, layoffs and stuff with their staff and the players. Uh, the Twins have done the right thing from day one, and uh, I'm just really, really. Uh, thankful i was a part of the the twins organization during the year 2020 so i'm very thankful for that 
Everything I've heard about the Twins, it's a great organization because I listen to Trevor Plouffe a lot on his podcast, talking baseball with those guys, and he's always. Well, I mean, that's the that's because you know Plouffe because you played with him in Philly, right? Yeah. I know, yeah. I know Trevor pretty well. He's I a mean, good job. Yeah, we're gonna get him on in the off season. He said he'd come on. And I was super excited for that because he sounds like a good dude. Yeah, he's a great baseball mind, great dude. I mean, he's provides very. He's one of those very uh, instinctive and you know exquisite minds in baseball that really kind of gets deep into the details and stuff. He's a fun, he's a, he'll have a, be a fun guest of yours, no doubt. Awesome. I, I'm, a, I'm excited for it. I was like, I'm excited for you. So go and I'm going to step back from like this season get, so everybody can get to know you a little bit. Why did, cause you were a great high school basketball player, like fifth all time in Oklahoma in points. Why'd you choose to go into the MLB draft and then go to Southeast Missouri state? Um, well, being really, being just completely honest, it was signing bonus. <laughs> I tell you, it's all signing bonus. And I was like, hey, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah, uh, you know, just kind of that and off the chance – or knowing that if I wanted to go back later on, I can go back and play basketball. So, it's one of those things. The real reason uh, – well, well, other real reasons because I didn't want to look back, you know, years from now and wonder what if. You know, kind of question, like, what if I give baseball a chance? Uh, you know, what would happen? So I, I kind of just wanted to uh, make sure I didn't have any regret and knew that if I didn't like it the first year, two, three, four, whatever, I can always go back and play you know, basketball. So that was kind of the, the deciding factor in my decision. You made the right choice. I can tell you the regret sucks. I uh, blew my elbow out my senior year playing baseball. I was supposed to go around where you went, like the 13th to like the 20th rounds. And instead of opting to get Tommy Johns at that time and go to community college, I was like, I'm just going to join the Army. I'm done with this. I was worn out and that kind of stuff. I still ended up getting Tommy Johns anyways, just to make my life a little bit easier being athletic and stuff. <laughs> but, I was, yeah, no, because I'm because you graduated 2009, right? Yeah. Yeah, yep. so I graduated 2010. It's funny, like, thinking back 10 years ago, like, how much, like, the high school baseball has oh changed – like, with, you have all these traveling teams now. Like, high school yeah. baseball is, like, kind of cool, but, like, all the scouts are just focused on all these, basically, circuses just going around. All these, all these uh, not circuses, but, like, these traveling teams. That was, like, yeah, the best word. Like that. It's like that in high school basketball. I mean, great. Yeah, 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 basketball looks a, lot more, looks a lot more fun than how it was played 10 years ago. And I, and I love the style of basketball we played, but, like, it – I wish I was a high school kid now, but I'd probably, you know, say that. I'll probably say that 10 years from, from now, say it again. So, I mean, who doesn't want to go back to that, like, that body, how nice it was? Like, you never felt pain or anything. Oh I, I think this this year I'm 30 now, so this is, like, the first year I had to, like, every day get up, take care of myself, watch what I eat, drink plenty of water, make sure I sleep. Well, I had to actually, like, really take care of myself. You Before then it was just – you know, I had a youthful metabolism all the way up to like 29 and a half years old. So has your diet completely changed? Uh, I've always had a decent diet for the most part. It's never been like perfectly healthy, but I can give myself like, like two meals a night and everything's mostly like clean. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, but the thing is I eat a lot, like okay. I eat healthy a lot and I just get like, I bored me and, that's what catches me is I got, I got to stop that. Like when I'm watching baseball or basketball, I just said they're munch on something. And that's what gets, me. you know, usually I can burn that off in a, you know, 30 minute BP for, for a game, but you know, it kind of slows down for you when you hit the old three zero. And you're one of the older guys in camp right now, right? I believe. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Not Cause the I, the oldest, but one of, but like there's a, I was looking at the raw, like the non, like who's all in the taxi squad and it's like young, and then there's no really middle age, and then it's like the older guys. Yeah, it's yeah, that, you're exactly right. Well, it has to be cool because you're taking on more of a mentor spot, like helping these younger guys. No, oh, these guys don't need my help. They're, they already, are, they're, they're already good. The prospects they have here are ridiculous. I, I mean, anybody blowing your mind? Like you're just like this guy's gonna be the next. Royce Royce Lewis is exceptionally exceptionally talented. Uh, all five tools are just. Just drip with with uh, with just talent. I mean, it's 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 ridiculous. You know, he's powered all fields. 
fast, um, good arm, good instincts. Uh, he's been had putting together some pretty good at bats here. Uh, I know there's you know kind of short sample size this is the first time I play with him, but he's been really impressive. Alex Kirilov, another really impressive bat. I mean, his discipline and just you know, consistency, you know, in such a inconsistent uh, workload we're getting has been really impressive for a younger guy. And Trevor Larnick and uh, uh, Jeffers and Rooker, those three guys can really, really swing the bat and really uh, hit the balls with authority. And they got a lot of talent, uh, young talent here in St. St. Paul. And it's been, it's been pretty, it's been fun to be around and you know, just kind of just watch them. Right, it's a, you're getting a free show basically of the top talent. <laughs> um, what's your day, your daily routine like right now? Because it looks like they got you in a hotel, right? Yeah, yeah, they got a nice Hyatt. I've been collecting all kinds of Hyatt rewards points right now. Uh, we got like thirty foot ceilings, so you can swing a bat all okay. the time, full reps if you want, which I do quite frequently. Uh, daily routine is we um, get up. Well, the Saints are at home which, you know, it's like week on, week off or whatever. Uh, we have to be there. We have to be out of the field by 1 or 1.30 every I think 1. Um, so we usually get up in the morning. I think tomorrow i got to be there at 8, 8.39. Day, batting case, first group in the batting case starts around 8.45, 9 o'clock. Do some, on, some BP um, and maybe do a little defense stuff, maybe not. And then we'll take a little break and we'll roll around to like a uh, – Five to six, anywhere from four to seven inning simulated inter squad game. We have like, I think we had like eight guys on one team, sometimes like six, sometimes like five. Like, we have had like coaches play like corner outfield spot and third base. Uh, it's so it, I've always wondered what a pickup uh, baseball game would look like. And this is, uh, yeah, it's, it's exactly <laughs> how I imagine. It's pretty, it's pretty, uh, wow. Unorganized. I, mean, I guess it's it's different. It's it's a lot of fun though. It's it's fun. It's like it's it's almost like you're a kid again. You're just out there playing. Uh, there's no fans. There's Is no that weird? Here. Not having fans, like yeah, definitely. It's, it's like it's, almost back to high school ball. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely weird, and it's really hard because it's uh, it's early in the morning, and the guys are still throwing 98 miles per hour. So it's like, gosh, this wasn't hard enough with the drilling and like all this, you know, height to get ready. It's definitely hard at 11 in the morning. I like guess yeah. uh, it's been a challenge, but no, we started like having little games and we started making our own little comp inside competitions with each other. And uh, it's been, the game's been pretty competitive and it's been, it's been a good, like I said, it's been a, it's been a, for the circumstance, it's been really fun. That's awesome. What are you doing to pass your time then? Like when, when you're out, I mean, cause you guys can't really leave the hotel or anything. You're quarantined. Yeah. They, we got to stay in, uh, we're allowed to like get out and walk around. We're not really you know, supposed to go anywhere and sit down, but we get out and walk around. A lot of guys will golf and I don't golf. I play a lot of, uh, PS4. What else I do? I what are you playing on PS4? It'll be the show right now. Cause I'm such a loser. I, I haven't played my PS4 for like five years and, uh, I get, I get home. And it was obviously we were in quarantine, so I was like, I got nothing to do. So, the, the, I hadn't had my baseball fix yet because, you know, I get cut off in the middle of spring training. So, I went and bought it be the show, turned it on, and I started playing. I started playing online. Never played like, any type of game online before. And I just got addicted to the competition. It's addicting. I, That's all I play. Addicted. Yeah. And I, and I got my ass kicked for like, I'm talking, I play, and I play from like time I get up nine, like, one o'clock in the morning, so I went to bed, and I was getting just hammered by I'm probably, kids, adults, probably, and everybody in between was just rocking me. And I, I made it. I was determined to like get better, and I've gotten a little bit better, like almost to the World Series level. Oh, that that's better than I've ever done. I've been playing it since like. But I, so I, I play probably. I play that a lot. So that's I, all gotten, I do. To it. I got so sucked into like the chase of all the rewards and cards. I'm always at the end of prestige level. Oh jeez. Uh, yeah, like it's been it's been a rabbit hole. And I don't think here's the thing, I don't think I'll play it next year's because this is so just I've just been so wound up in it. Like I don't know. It's, but it's been fun. I've enjoyed it. And honestly, I just got into it back then because it's really helped. It's really helped pastime here.
Yeah, no, that's um, – because where am I right now, I'm thinking? Because I play – the only two games I play right now are MLB The Show and then COD Warzone because it's free and it's just something to pass the time yeah. when MLB The Show is uh, pissing me off, quite frankly. Because uh, that game's frustrating. I mean, it's baseball. You, especially at the higher levels, you have to think about it not oh. as a video game. You actually have to have an approach to the plate, which drives me – drives me absolutely nuts sometimes. Because all I want to do is hit the damn ball. Yeah, say I don't want to like take pitches. It's boring. Exactly. <laughs> same problems in virtual. That's why guys, I'm this. I can't. I'm doing. I'm trying to do the exact opposite in real life. I'm just going back to my old habits on you know PS4. Are That's Are you up. a fir- first pitch swinger? I, I'm not. I, I I was. I was just swinging the rosin bag. But uh, <laughs> now I, I I learned to be a little more disciplined. I I make myself like tapes on your strike. So who in MLB the show that's me up on the real baseball field? <laughs> so who's who's your favorite player right now in MLB the show? Because I'm just, I'm thinking I hate that Babe Ruth card. If you've got that one yet, I wasn't a big fan. He ranks for me. I can't hit home runs with them. I just hit line drives. That's how I was with Larry Walker. I was a singles machine with Larry Walker, but I got prestige Larry Walker. Okay. Really I'm almost I'm almost got prestige Mickey Mantle. Okay. Uh, and I got Trout. Trout's really good. I haven't uh, been able to afford trout because I I'm no money spent. Okay, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I suck so bad at spending money. I was getting frustrated early on. Oh, when I, I had a when I had a job. I'm gonna buy myself the relevancy here. <laughs> no, when I had a job, believe me, I I buy studs left and right. Now that I can't work and I'm broke, I'm like, all right, I gotta <laughs> figure this out some other way. Um, I. Man, trout just the guy. That guy's unbelievable. Yeah, like yeah. I just looked up on the TV and he's at bat. And, like, even in the – like, he's better in real life almost than he is in the video game, I feel like, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, he's ridiculously good. And it's it's, it's almost frustrating because it's like – as a player, it's, like, it's not easy. Right. <laughs> and do what you're doing is not easy at all. He makes it look easy. Like, doing a fraction of what he does isn't easy, you know? Like, he's no. well above like, the average threshold in everything. And day, every year in, year out, and it's like it's not easy. No, he's ever uh, like you should be doing that so effortlessly. Cause it's not easy. Well, against the Mariners, he loves to kill us, and he just played his like 162, 162 game against the Mariners. He has 45 home runs in like that 10 year span. Like, he just kills them, yeah. and it's ridiculous. That is like the most successful team he plays against the Mariners. I think so. so- yeah. So I don't even be that much to it, but I feel like every, every time he's at the Mariners, he is he's doing some damage. Yeah, it's something it's something with Team Mobile Park they call it now. That still throws me off. I want to call it Safeco. Um, then so back to that question: Who is your guy? Like who who's your favorite player with it? Oh man, I, it was. I think it's Mickey Mantle. Okay, the, dude, the new Bryce Harper card. Bryce Harper card's sick. I've always got him prestiged. So that that could be a new one, but okay. say Mickey Mantle. Because I just finished. Because I don't play too much online with it. Because earlier on in the year, is is it is it frustrating me. Because last year I was almost hitting World Series level, and then this year I'm like 50 below. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I said they changed the game a lot, and I, I didn't appreciate it. So I've just been doing a lot more of the online stuff, uh, the offline stuff. And so I just finished the eighth inning today, and okay. I, I sold it. Because tomorrow tops now is coming out, and I'm like, I'm, I've been w- hoping. I'm like, where's my Kyle Lewis card? <laughs> right, yeah, no. Sh- and they only have him at a 75, which is blowing my mind. Like, I get that, like Roberts, like more talented, and like the guy's a freak. But him being like higher ranked than Lewis right now, I mean, Lewis is beating him in average by almost 100 points. Yeah, well, part of that has to do with Chicago, and he's on a team that's a little more competitive, so unfortunately. Right. I watched that game last night. I was getting worried that you might be getting called up. Some of the guys were, like, dropping like flies for a second last night. The <laughs> twins. I saw, like, guys just getting a little nicked up, and I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, they've been banged up, man. But, yeah, they've uh, they've got some – I mean, if that happens, there's plenty of talent here to fill that spot. Oh, that they, catch that Buck made last night. He's ridiculous, man. That guy, I haven't – I haven't seen an outfielder like I, I play with Ender and Ciarte. He's a you know gold glove yeah. winning outfielder, one of the best outfielders in baseball. 
takes proficient routes. Ender's not – he's a fast guy, but he's not like a burner. Like, I'm, like, I'm faster than Ender, but he's really efficient with his routes, great jumps and reads. But Buxton's got like – he's fast. He's one of the fastest dudes in baseball, and he just gets superb jumps and superb reads, and he's got superb arm, man. He's just – I mean, he's a generational talent in Centerfield. And he's it's so fun. fun. He's so fun to watch. Like, I was just – I don't – I like I said, I'm always watching Mariners games, so not having them and popping it on TV. And I was like, oh, I get the White Sox. This will be fun to watch. And then Buck makes that catch, and you're like, holy crap. Because, I mean, Kyle Lewis has that talent, but not, like, to that level, quite frankly. Just watching something you can cover it all. That's not a knock on Kyle. No. Buxton's a world-class athlete. And Kyle's a great athlete, too. He's a great – but Bucks is, like, a world-class athlete, and it's just, you know, is what it is. And, but that's not going to gonna hold Kyle Lewis back at all. No, no, not at all. He's, so, is the is the treatment in St. Paul, like, is it – do you feel like you're in the minor leagues, or are they treating you kind of showy? No, it's 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 real showy. It's uh, – it's, 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 it's pretty big league, and – like I said, I I, I got to just appreciate the Twins or how they're handling everything. Uh, it's really big league because, you know, we technically, if we do play, we will be big leaguers, I guess. And you yeah, big, league, big league guys in that clubhouse. But, no, it's it's really professional. It's uh, a lot of a lot of self-responsibility, you know, get in, get your work in, you know, and all that. And it's been, it's been a good – it's been a good mix of quality work but with a lot of professionalism to go with it. Do you think uh, young Lane Adams would be successful in this kind of situation? Um, it's a really tough yeah. question. <laughs> uh, I, I say that I say that because I can see myself, young self, really struggling with the live at bats. I, I can see myself really, really struggling uh, with like the live at bats every you know two, three days, possibly. You know, the inconsistency of the, the game rest would make me struggle, but the work. No, I energetic lane would absolutely love to be in this type of situation, especially with this, the staff and their the player development program they got and personnel. It's it's very good. So I would I would love I would love to be in this at twenty years old, twenty one, no doubt. But, Is this where you think spring training should be going to? Huh? Do you, uh, sorry, you keep cutting in and out, so I don't notice when it's a, um. Do you think this is where spring training should go to? I know Plouffe kind of like hit it on that like spring training is kind of boring. It is boring. Yeah. I, oh, well, I say it's boring for guys like Plouffe who you know just show up and go through the motions. You're gonna be on the twenty-five six-man roster. Right. It ain't so boring. Hey, <laughs> who like freaking hanging on every thread of every BP swing? <laughs> Dude, like I just need to make the roster. It's exhausting. It's nerve-wracking. <laughs> Blue. You tell him I said that. I, I will when I talk to him. I, I can't wait because I have him lined up and then I have um, – there's somebody else that's a pitcher. I don't want him to say his name wrong because then, like, they watch and they go, oh, my God, you're an idiot. Uh, no, it's it, this has been a fun ride. I've got – we started, like, with Dave Sims and then we got well, – me and Abe are big into, like, card collecting. You can't see over, like, big into, like, collecting baseball oh. cards. Oh, yeah. That's uh, that's how him and I met. Like he lives actually. Well, he just he's moving to Reading, Pennsylvania. We met over Twitter, like being in the hobby community. And I was like, I'm bored. I want to do a podcast. He's like, So do I. And I was like, Perfect. That's how that worked out. But do you, are you a baseball card collector? Because I was going to ask you about what's the process of signing autographs. I'm not. And actually, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I wish I would have got into it as a kid. And actually, my old dentist gave me a, like five boxes of like some tops, all numerical order. And I was probably six years old. I was like, I don't want this shit. <laughs> and I just, like, I don't even know what to do with them. I was like, my mom was like, he gave me these cards. I took, is that dentist office? He gave them to me. But I was like, oh, this is awesome. You know, because they got to be nice. Right. But I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know I could profit on them later or that, that they were actually really cool. Well, like, especially like, now. I don't want to like collect stuff. I don't give a I don't give a damn. I, so, yeah, I probably – I wish I kicked myself in the butt in that every day. Yeah. No, well, no, I don't collect cards. No, so especially now, like, we're going through a new um, card boom. I mean, uh, Yeah, like all those card 
people are becoming parents. Of kids yeah, becoming parents. Zion's really the big one. He really brought money back to the hobby. Yeah. And, like, Luis has brought money to the hobby. And that Jason Dominguez kid, his cards go for a ridiculous amount of money. He's never even played in a yeah. minor league game. I have a buddy who owns a sports collection or a sports memorabilia store. And he's, I think, him and his brothers, uncle, cousin, mom, all went to the different Walmart's targets and bought a bunch of Topps car cards off crates, hoping to get that Zion Williamson card. I think they got one. I think, I think they got. I think they got a couple. But yeah, I heard that was the big one. There you go. I mean, the the biggest card that like everybody wants in their collection is of course this Trout rookie card that think goes for like three grand. Right. Which is stupid because it's a piece of cardboard. <laughs> like <laughs> thinking about it. That's so what I, so I, thought, I thought at five years old. Exactly. So I, I know you have you've signed some some autos and stuff. What's the process like for that? Do they just send you a bunch of stuff? Does that happen during spring training? What's the what's the process with that? Um yeah, uh you'll get stuff, they'll come and you'll get uh, manila envelopes or just regular you know, envelope and they'll have cards, sometimes letters. I don't really read the letters too often. Um I just sign a card and put it back and I I sign it. I probably do it every week. I get cards, and I don't get a lot of them, but I get like ten a week. And I'll, you know, I think every Friday, I think I would just like before I I come in before I do anything, I would just go through, sign all of them, put them back in the resend envelopes, give them to our club, and he mail them off for me. And that's what oh, most, nice. but most guys do. If, it, if, it, if I had to die, ever go to the post office and send it back, I wouldn't do it. So if you've ever sent me a card to my home address, know that I probably just. Never no. did anything. I, I'm picky when it comes to the like autographs. Like I have to have them like certified. Like they, they have to like be tops, like signed, like on the card. I don't I mean like if you sign like a card for me, like I'd honor it and be in the collection, but I'm more like the ones that already have the, the certification on them. Yeah, I understand that. I think I signed some of those with you did. I was looking up I think I bought one just recently because I like everybody I talked to, I kinda want like Something of them. You signed in 2015, 13, when you were at the Royals. Yeah, it was Panini one. Yeah, Panini. Uh, I, I, was, I was looking if you had any tops. Mostly Panini. Panini's yeah. all right. They just don't have the um, the the logos and stuff. It's uh, funny because, like, I, uh, before Taiwan Walker got traded to the Blue Jays, I started collecting him again. His auto on all his cards are always different. Really? I think I have, like, three, I have three sets of autographs and – they just come and go. Whatever, whatever my, I don't know. It, it, I'm looking right now. They're, they're, it's it's pretty much the same. The last time you signed was 2018. That's the newest one I'm seeing, and it's in LA. I mean, I I would be very short to you because I mean signing. I have three. I probably write the same, but I feel like I'm writing in three different ways. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't get like guys like so like Edgar. You know, you signed a whole bunch. Like his signature is so clean. By every yeah, like that's every fine detail. Every fine detail. Yeah, and I'm like, after signing like a thousand cards, I'd be so over it. I'd be like, this sucks. I think I signed like 15,000 one time. I'm like, a weekend that was terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Like, <laughs> it was one. But I mean, you get paid for it, so I mean. It hands them out. It was, it was like this. Man, they make you earn it. That's for damn sure. That's what, yeah, Phil Hughes was talking about that because he's big into the card game. He's kind of, and he's probably one of the reasons why baseball cards have gotten so big. Having that like baseball celebrity, you know, World Series pitcher in there doing that kind of stuff. Minute, former Minnesota Twin, as I'm thinking about it. Um, so what do you? You're a big basketball fan. Who's your team? I know you're an NBA guy. I'm a big LeBron guy. I love LeBron. LeBron. I love LeBron. Uh, I'm. Jordan's better. He's not. <laughs> but I've always started to transition to a Thunder fan. Okay. So I, I've always I've been a bit, I met LeBron when I was uh, 16, 17. That's your profile picture on Twitter, right? Met him, and I saw him play at AU tournament when he was in high school. And ever since then, I liked him. Um, so I've been a fan for goddamn almost two decades, and. Uh, but I'm slow, so I've just like followed him the whole time. But I'm slowly starting to become a Thunder fan. And All right. I, I, I told myself I wouldn't become a Thunder fan until they were bad again. But I feel like they kind of, they, well, they had the peak where they were really good, Westbrook, Harden, 
KD is like, well, they're kind of. How did they not win a championship with that team? Not LeBron, duh. Yeah, LeBron. Um, Question is that. I know. Dame keeps me being a Blazers fan. I don't. I think if Damian Lillard wasn't with the Blazers, I would probably lost my fandom. Because um, it definitely – my fandom went away when Brandon Roy got hurt. I was like, I'm done. I'm like, uh, I met Brandon Roy. He was at the basketball camp. Awesome dude, man. I was really, really, really pulling for him. And then I think he was like that – what year did he get hurt? Twelve. Okay, I met him in 08, and man, I was a big fan of him. When he, yeah, when he got hurt, I was – Yeah, because he's the rookie of the year, uh, 2007, 2008. And then – because he already had bad knees. That was the thing that nobody knew about. Like, he had bad knees in, in college. are already deteriorating. Yeah, Blazers, Greg, of course, went with him. Hey, Greg Oden. I was a big Greg Oden at the draft. I, was, I thought it was a great pick. I, the, just hindsight. Well, the, and they all go, you should have taken Kevin Durant. We didn't need him. We didn't need another shooter. You, you already had Brandon Roy. Like, it's it's kind of like if you go to the Michael Jordan, Sam Bowie thing. We had Clyde Drexler. You don't need – like, that's a – if Michael Jordan didn't exist, Clyde Drexler would be probably one of the best – like, right, the yeah. greatest two-guard of all time. I mean, at that – from that era, I think the greatest two-guard of all time is Kobe. It's like 2014 and, like, five blocks as a freshman with one hand <laughs> and took us to the national championship with one hand. Yeah. Like, that, that's pretty uh, – that's one one worthy, right? Now. That's uh, that. you know what? You don't have to explain yourself to me why you took him one one. I, I saw he's still trying. To, he's playing in China. I, I saw he just recently signed, like he signed like a year ago or something. Did he? Man, I, I, I liked. Him. I, liked him. I, I liked him. I mean, when Odin was on the court, he was extremely talented. He showed that um, he had the NBA talent. He even showed it when he played with LeBron in 2013. His knees just can't do it, and that's yeah. that's the unfortunate thing. You can't. You can only do what your body allows you to do. No, exactly. And, uh, no, I, I was kind of over it. You know, Roy's gone, and you're like, yeah. And then they draft this kid, Damian Lillard. You're like, one, you're like, who is this guy? Why is he coming seventh overall? And that, and I was more hyped for Myers Leonard. I'm like, oh, big, tall guy, kind of can shoot the three. And then you're like, oh, Myers is soft. And then Damian Lillard's this kid from Oakland, and you're like, how does he do the things he's doing? It. They say he's six three. Dame's more yeah. like six foot because I stood next to Dame. Dame's not that tall. They all at basketball players always lie about that. I was six five, and I'm barely six three. So you can <laughs> subtract, subtract a minimum inch and a half off every basketball player. Hey, baseball baseball reference gives you six four. Oh yeah, I lied about that too. <laughs> I, just, I, I just a little more, and I play basketball. <laughs> I, I like, I'm six foot, like on the dot, and I'm I say I'm six one. I, I I have to. My brother's six. My little brother's six five. I, I gotta say, oh, I'm at least. Oh. Someone comes up to me and says, "Oh, I'm six four. And someone says, "I'm six four. It's like, ah, he's automatically six three to me. Like, I automatically he's lying because I lie about it. I think all guys lie about their height. No, <laughs> it's not a big deal. No, Man, whatever. So LeBron fans, see LeBron with me. I feel like LeBron's. I hate to say this out loud. I think LeBron's a little soft. The only time I ever got to see LeBron play like. In person was against the Blazers. Blazers were putting a hurt on the Cavs. And LeBron like says, "I'm done in the in the set. Doesn't play the second half." And we paid all this money to go see LeBron play, and he gives <laughs> up. And um, and I was like, "God, oh, that sucks." And then like that season too, I got to see Kobe play his last game in the Moda Center. It was cool. I sat right by CJ McCollum's mom because my dad's friends with her. And um, watching Kobe lose by 20 points. Dame, I think, dropped like 58 that night, and he's still going for it. I'm like, that guy, it's just a different mentality. Like, LeBron has all the talent in the world. I think if he had that killer mentality like Kobe or Jordan, I don't think he would have ever lost as many championships as he has. He kills people. Come what? on. <laughs> you, don't carry, you don't carry me, you, and two other bums to the NBA Finals the way he does. Come that's, on. I mean, that's <laughs> the, 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 the <laughs> first team. I understand exactly what you're talking about the whole that. I think, yeah, there's – I understand. And I, and I, I can see the person – there's definitely a personality difference between right. Kobe and LeBron, and that's no doubt. But, yeah, damn, I would love Dame, man. And He's got that Kobe of, mindset. Yeah, 100%. And, yeah, 100%. He's, he's fearless. He's relentless. He takes on challenges, man. And you got to respect that. No matter how he like, – how he – performs or you know his team wins or losses he you know he lays it out there for you and as a fan not even the Blazers but as a fan of the 
basketball stuff. I appreciate that. Well, and the way he leads and the way that, like, he's showing his community, like, being out there on the front lines and that kind of stuff, really – I knew that that's the person Dame is, but he's showing it instead of, like, a lot of these guys are, like, being all talk and you don't see them do a lot of their stuff. Dame's out there doing it, and I'm like, that's a cool dude. Right, yeah, no doubt. He, uh, do you think he could win in Portland? CJ needs to go. I uh, love – so I, I'm not a fan of CJ. I like – all right, so it's not that I'm not a fan of CJ. Um, CJ – He needs another different piece. Well, CJ needs to just be his own guard. CJ needs to go to his own team, run his own team. That's the issue with CJ and Dame. And CJ is not really a combo guard. He's more of a one. And they have him play in the two just because you – know, you want Dame to have the ball in his hands all the time. And all CJ does is dribble, dribble, step back, shoot from the mid-range, and Dame's sitting there open, and I'm like – I'm sorry, CJ. Yeah, you have a super max contract, but Damian Lillard is freaking all NBA, and especially in this time with guards. He's first team. I mean, he's an all star. Like, you got to give him the ball. Um, I think the pieces can be there. It's getting there, especially on the we've they've always been missing bigs. If Whiteside stays, Nurkic stays, then and Collins can all stay healthy for a whole season. I think that really puts them in a in a big spot. To move, the, to move up because I think that's what's always kind of hurt them because the guard side they're not hurting on I mean and especially how they started running towards the end of this year letting CJ have his time with the ball and like separating them not having them play together she played together just fine but CJ's better when he doesn't have to play with Dame because he gets to be that guy yeah he has more shots for him yeah yeah I got and you got yeah. mellow yeah I love uh I uh and I, that's kind of the same thing he does so much for us for the Portland he you know, he's everything for his team, the city. Uh, he's he's all, he's committed there, and it's just like he, they keep coming up short. And it's not on him. The West is good. You got I mean, you got LeBron, you got Kawhi, you got to deal with just to get to the just to get to the dance. You know, right? And it's like I don't know. It's just I think it just might be too high of too steep a mountain to climb, and it's unfortunate because he's a great player. I think he's one of the, you know he's an, I think he's an all time great player just on the offensive side of the ball, just like that, but. The defensive like part has Port always killed Portland. I feel like in just him being in Portland, he's not going to get the respect in the history the way he deserves. So but so. he thrives off that. That's what he likes. He does thrive off being the underdog. He does. I mean, like, if you look, he went to Weber, Weber State, the only offer he got. Then he gets drafted to Portland. Everybody's like, what? I think the – and the thing with Portland, we don't have anything else out here. You don't – we have, I mean, Hillsborough, which is right next to Portland, has the hops. And then you got, like, the Portland Timbers. That's it for sports teams. So, Portland and any of their sports team is die hard. Oh, and yeah. They, and they love you. They'll hate you. Like, the Joe Blazers got hated. But, like, if you're good people like Damian Lillard, they worship the ground you walk on. Right. Uh, yeah, the Rose Gardens, I mean, the Moto Center is one of my favorite places to watch yeah, a basketball I'm, game. I'm going to try to catch a game there sometime if I can. Hey, you, you come up, hit me up, I'll come with you. All right, that sounds like a date. Hey, perfect, man. Um, so getting back to baseball, what, what what's the biggest jump in, like, the minor league level? Talk like about pitching, like hitting, yeah. Just for minor league level? Yeah, for the minor league level. Because, I mean, I know from the show, I mean, it's so – it's it's a huge jump, isn't it? Um, asking multiple questions. Yeah, yeah, it's a big jump. You guys got you guys got guys throwing ninety eight, but it's not ninety eight straight. It's ninety eight going like that. I mean, ten years ago, if you threw ninety eight to a hundred, and everyone in baseball knew who you were. Now right. it's like I got guys. I I saw three guys throw a hundred the you know, first day here, and I'd never heard of them before. <laughs> it, makes, it makes no damn sense. <laughs> it's just. As far as uh, levels go, I think the one jump is from uh, rookie ball to A ball. That was – that was uh, I noticed that was a little bit of a gap there. And then it was from uh, double A to triple A. And a lot of people say high A to double A. But I thought double A to triple A. And that mostly because mo I got to triple A, that was kind of when I started the whole cat and mouse game. It's kind of okay. – the it's more chess than checkers. You know, double A, you know, you'll run into some really good prospect arms, guys that go, you know, really hard and have good stuff, but you kind of, 
you know, they're going to they're gonna stick to their game plan where you get some guys up there, a little more seasoned in AAA, um, who have big league time and can, you know, get big league hitters out. They, they, they start pitching you to get yourself out, and that's – that I, that's something I struggle with my first go in triple A and that's something that, so I for me get double A or double A triple A was the was the most the toughest jump in it, my because like, we have right now this will be the well it didn't happen this year but this will be the last year with three different classes of single A is there is did, have you played in all different like advanced class single A short season I played at every level of like multiple years is there is there a big difference, like with like short season to like class A advance? Um, yeah. Okay, I I, yeah. Fi- I mean I figured like uh, thinking. Well, there's yeah, and then, but there's a smaller difference. Well, there's a difference. We got like AZL. So I, to me, now this is like young lane. This is like nineteen year old, twenty year old, twenty one year old lane. You know, you I can tell there's a difference. Now, if I was to go back and play a week in AZL and go to a week to high, I, would, there, would I be able to tell a difference there now? I don't know. But I could tell a difference going from each level on up. Maybe that's me psychologically kind of psyching myself out maybe a little bit. But I could, I could tell. All and right. I'll, your- I'll, I'll ask some guys tomorrow about that. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll ask some guys in class, see what they're taking. So some of them are young. Some are just yeah. just old things. So I'll, it's a good question. I mean, that's the crazy thing, like, because I've been following, like, just the Mariners very closely, and they've got, like, 19-year-old Novelli Marte, who this is his first year of big league ball. Like, not big league, but, like, professional baseball, really. He played in the mm-hmm. Dominican Winter League last year, but so the first time he's really stepping up. And I think that's so crazy that you play, mm-hmm. you're, you're facing major league arms, but just last year you were, you're an 18-year-old kid. Like, it's so weird this year. But I think it's so good for those top prospects because they're get, being able to – see the, the big league stuff. No, oh, it's absolutely like being able to like the twins prospects or any prospects being in this type of camp are able to, you know, you're able to be around big league guys. And one, you're able to see how important, because technically you're almost kind of the team. You know, you watch the games at night. We get, it's almost like we're on the practice squad. Right. right. There's a squad for baseball. Like they have football. It's like that. We go over film and everything, pitchers and, at a way, you almost feel like you're connected to the major league team because you know guys are getting moved up. So, well, any moment you can get called up. Yeah. So you are a little more connected. And you kind of pay attention, and you know, you, and in the spring training or the summer camp we had, you get to see those guys up close, how they prepare, and the consistency they bring. So a lot of the guys, you know, younger guys being around that, seeing, you know, the day in day out grind and process of being able to compete every day at the major league level, you know, the work it takes that goes into it. I think it's good for a lot of young players to be around, you know, guys that can, you know, that are real professional with, with what they do. What, what, what is your, uh, I can't speak, excuse me. Uh, what is your call-up story? How, how'd that happen for you to get called up to the majors? Because your first time was with Kansas City. Yeah, my call-up story wasn't very cool. It wasn't exciting. I say it wasn't exciting. It was – I was, I was thrilled to get called up. But as far as, like, surprise, no. There was no – there was no – there was no call-up guard factor because um, the Royals were contending. I think it was the first time they were in, like, serious contention for 30 years. Um, mm-hmm. So, they were – they were all, all hands on deck. They weren't – they were going to do whatever they can to compete for the Central. And I think, like – I just like got hit in the wrist, and it's like four weeks, all of July. I came back in August, and our assistant GM was there. He's like, "Hey, just want you to know, we're gonna be watching you really closely because we think you can be our you know, uh, fourth outfielder or a bench bench outfielder, pinch runner, bench bat in September. So just want you to be aware of that." I'm like, "All right." So that kind of told me, and then he, I mean, they were they were all, they were there. They were they were they had a front office assistant GM. You know, Van Scout there watching every one of our games. And Assistant GM came probably a week before call up started. He's like, hey, you've done a great job. You know, we really like what we're seeing and all this stuff. Didn't didn't say word for word that it was gonna happen, but really, you know, kind of said be expect to in a way. So it wasn't as it wasn't as uh wow as a surprise, but it's a pretty cool story behind it. Yeah. I played 
Northwest Arkansas, which is two hours from where I grew up. Okay. So it was the last game of the year um, or last series of the season or home series. And uh, I, it's like a show and go at a seven o'clock game. Man, it's like, don't get here till five. And I'll have the lineup posted at, uh, at six, but it's just all in a group chat, a group text message. Had the lineup posted at six, just act like you're going to, just prepare as if you're going to be in the game. So, all right, so we get there at five, no, no prepare, hit the cage, whatever. Take a shower, get ready for pregame, get dressed. It's like 10 after six, no lineup posted. So, obviously, it's, it's, we know, it's like, well, am I going up or not? I, we all know what, why the delay in the lineup, you know, right? right? So it's like, well, Jesus, man, I hurried up already. <laughs> like, I can, like, be all cool and excited, or I got to play this Texas League game 139 out here. Like, what, which one is it? And then I was like, I guess. I was like, it's, it's like 6.30 or 6.35. I was like, I, I guess I'm not, not playing. Or I guess I'm playing. So I walk out, and so as I turn the corner, he – calls me back my i had a bunch of family come up since the last series of the home series right cousin mom aunts cu- cu- brother nieces every whole shebang was up there and uh he called me in the office told me it's going up and it's like hey you can't tell anybody I'm like well my whole damn family's out there <laughs> i got 15 <laughs> members i not playing like, oops on, on the day of the call up the roster expand yeah that's not they're gonna so, figure it out. Yeah, and so I just texted my mom. I was like, "Hey, I'm not playing. I'm going. Get call, I get called up. I'll meet you at the hotel. I'm not. We gotta keep this on DL. I'll tell. Don't tell anybody till we get back. To, get back to the hotel. So they said that. I, I don't know. I don't know what the reason was. I left the game, but I met everyone back at the hotel, and I was able to tell them, "Hey, I got called up and all that stuff." So. It wasn't as surprising, I caught off guard, but it was a really cool like, moment for me and my family to kind of experience that together. Well, and, like, you would have never made it that, to that if your mom didn't um, take you to the Sonic. I was reading that story that you wanted to quit uh, baseball in high school and your mom took you to Sonic, which was my first job ever, so I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was not – I did not want to play high school baseball. I wanted to play – just focus on basketball and – we we're coming back from our last AAU basketball tournament, and we usually turn left at this junction to go home. And she turns right, and like, where the hell are you going? It's late. Like, I we just had like a four day tournament. I'm exhausted. It's like, what? You're not you're not gonna play baseball. You're getting a job. Like, no. <laughs> so you say, you're not sitting at home. I was like, I'm not planning. On, I was like, I don't plan. Mom, I don't plan on sitting at home. I plan on like working at basketball, like working out. That's, that's why I don't want to do this. Play baseball. I mean, you can do that and work and get a job. So it's like, yeah, we fine play. <laughs> that, yeah. And then, then, so how did they? Because I know a couple years ago, after you uh, with the Yankees, you got were you cut by the Yankees or? Yeah, I got released. Yeah, released by the Yankees. You're thinking about hanging it up. How did that conversation go? Like, what made you continue to keep going? Uh, I don't know, honestly, because I was really close. I was 26 at the time. And I kind of – I struggled at double A. I got really – the first time I've ever been released. I was like, well, I was kind of rock bottom. Because i never really gone through that before. Um, and I was just like, you know what? Set home. I enjoyed being home. Uh, I, was like, I was like, man, maybe – I was 26. I was like, maybe if I'm ever going to go back and play basketball, it's probably now or never. Like, at this point, I graduated at 30, you know. <laughs> I've been playing at 30. Uh, so, uh, so I really considered it, reached out to a couple coaches and stuff, and then talked to my uh, girlfriend at the time, wife now, and uh, the Cubs called, or the Royals called and offered me, like, a contract or whatever, or Miley deal, but then – so that kind of get leaning back towards baseball, and then the Cubs called, who were contending for a you know, playoff spot, and they say, "Hey, there's a chance you could be a September pinch runner." It's like, all right. So I took that. I didn't get called up that September, but there was a there, I was like in a position to be called up. So that 
got my butt back in gear for baseball. Well, it's like made me laugh, like looking at like your career as you've jumped from like the Braves to the Cubs organizations. Like you've gone back and forth. Mm-hmm. Was that just because you liked the organizations or were they contending? Because that's such a unique thing. Best opportunity. The best opportunity you're ever going to go. For yourself, whether it be financial, playing, whatever. It's just that everything is based – for me, is based off best opportunity. And a lot of guys in my situation are. But that's the tricky thing, though. There's not a whole lot of, like, best-case scenarios for guys in my situation. So right. it's just better than other cases. Exactly. Yeah. It, took you, it, it took you a few years to hit um, – to get that first home run when you finally got it. What was that moment like? Because that – you hit a moonshot, by the way. I, I've watched it a few times. You crushed the damn ball. Yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of. I remember being a lot of relief, um, not because it was the first home run, but because I was a, I was pinch hitting, and I never pinch hit for my life. I, I actually did like twice because someone got, like hurt in like my other minor league games, but never had to do it before. And I and the two times I had to do it, I was terrible. So I was I was kind of scuffling early pinch hitting. I was getting some hits, but not, it was like weak contact, swing a bunt, grab off the roll, not really had put together consistent, solid at bats. And I remember telling myself, I got to like find a way to make the, the pinch hit at bat slow down. Like I was just so sped up. And so that's when you know, I started just going to batting cages, got a little flicking, flipping uh, stroke light glasses on, turn on the fastball machine, just swinging and missing, breaking bats in the, you know, right before I go pinch hit, just hoping this would help me slow it down. And uh, did that. I'm talking – I didn't probably barrel one ball at 30 minutes down. And I was like, well, hope this works. And <laughs> hit a home run. I was like, ah. And that kind of just took all, like, the stress. That kind of just gave me a confidence, hey, I can do this. Or it also said – it gave me, like, a, a safety net. said, hey, this is what I need to do to be ready and have success. So I had, like, a foundation to, like, work on it and prepare for uh, how to pinch it, for me to pinch it, and also gain success or confidence knowing that I can be a successful pinch hitter. So uh, a lot of uh, lot, of, lot of good vibes came from that first pinch hit home run. Well, you and, love the, you love the inside pitch. I was, well, I've watched all your home runs, and they're all on inside pitches. Yeah, the thing is I try not to swing at them. That's like this one swing. That, here's the thing, though. I don't hit that pitch very well. But they throw me in there, and every now and then I'll look inside. They just pound me in up, and every now and sometimes I'll just like, well, you know what? I'll just try to freaking hit it one time, and that's usually what I – and I take a good enough swing. And it's not every time. I'm not saying every time I look at a home run, but occasionally I'll, I'll run into one. But, no, I really try not to swing at the inside pitches. <laughs> but um, what's your fit? You, what was more, more exciting, that first home run or your first walk-off home run? Because you've been able to do that. Person, I only walk off home runs. Oh, okay. So, I, so you only have one, all right. I don't know. Uh, as far as I, I don't really like the swing I took my first home run. Okay. As far as at least I don't really like watching that one. I'll take it, but a uh, lot. I think as far as I got a lot more positive out of the first home run, but I think the walk off a little more sexier. It was at Wrigley, right? That was at home. Oh, at home. Okay. With the Braves. I couldn't remember. And then you, you did something very interesting I was reading about with the Braves. You subbed yourself into a major league game. Well, how did that happen? Actually, I didn't do it. I didn't do it maliciously on purpose. But <laughs> right. I act, after, after the game, I acted like I did because I didn't want to be like a jackass. So I played it all. I played it off like I did for like a week. Just to drop about so word got around that in the press and the media that I did it on purpose. So what happened was we were up like one or two runs, no, two or three runs. And and what and what happened was Matt Kemp comes up. That's what made me laugh because it's Matt Kemp. <laughs> Matt Kemp comes up and they said and I and I'll promise you, I'll promise this, I'll take this to the grave till I die. I will this is my story. The bench coach comes up to me and says, hey, you're going – if it's, it's on or out, you're going to left field uh, next inning. Because that's what I've done all year for Matt Kent. Because the late innings. Like, all right. And Matt was on board with it too. I mean, it was – he didn't even grab his love. He 
you just went in. See, that was that was protocol for us. And then I come in and I just get rained. Not rained, like, like who the f told you to go into the game? I'm like, you did? Like, no, you're only supposed to go if he got on base. I'm like, 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 dude, I didn't just sub myself into a major baseball game, like, on my own terms. Like, I wouldn't have just like, but I like it did on purpose. <laughs> I was like, no, I didn't. And, uh, yeah, we ended up winning that game, by the way. Hey, that, that makes it better. <laughs> yeah, and Matt, yeah, like, Matt just came off a hamstring injury. So, my story was after the game, you know, Freddie Freeman and everyone's like, giving me a hard time. I said, yeah, I was just checks himself in. And I was like, I was like, yeah, man, Matt Kim, he's one for three at the walk at home. He had his fun. Take it to the house. He just came with hamstring injury. Trying that's, to watch what I, that's what I read. And I was like, this is awesome. I, th I didn't do it on purpose, but I kind of ran with this idea that I did for a little bit. I would, I would have ran with it forever. It's a, it's a great story. You take it to your grave. When you, when you decide to write your book, there you go. Um, yeah, out that action. What – I got a couple more quick questions. What what model bat do you use, like, in, like, Cleats Club? Who, who's your company? Uh, what brand or model? Let's go. Let's go. Brand and model on the bat, and then brand on the cleats and glove and batting. Uh, a brand of bats. I usually swing Invictus okay. LA one, which is my own model I made like eight years ago. Top so heavy, or is it knob heavy? Oh, it's barrel heavy. It's like a softball bat, but really heavy, like really top heavy. And it's actually so damn heavy. I had to like switch another model because I'm getting like older. I guess it's just like getting really heavier. Uh, so I like. Get a little more balanced bat, and I got a B45 CB15 that I just like. This is the first time I haven't I've swung a different model in like seven years, so it's really different. And it's working. It's been going well. Uh, I use a Wilson Love. Been with Wilson for two, three years now. Uh, Nike spikes and batting gloves. I, I would have judged you if you weren't anything else. I mean, I the, the, the Nike's headquarters is like a mile away from my house. A uh, big Nike guy. I've been, I've like. I mean, it's a kid. Are you a big shoe guy? I like shoes. I, I used to be real heavy into it, and I grew up. But uh, I have I have a lot. I, 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 I don't buy a whole lot anymore. I, I buy like probably one or two a year, like Jordans that come out. But I used to buy every color. What's your favorite one. Jordan? There's too many. Uh, if I had to rock one pair, I'd probably go. Cement, black cement threes. Okay. I'm going to let. Just because I can wear it with a lot of stuff. I love the, I have a, probably I have more 11s, but I feel like I don't wear those often because it's just kind of, I don't know. So the only pair I have left in my like Jordan collection is my 11. 11 lows. I can't remember which ones they are. I beat the shit. There you go. Yeah, I have to have yeah. those. I, have to, yeah. I, I got them at the employee store. I was lucky. They had my size. I was like, oh, perfect. I don't – I'm not as big as shoe guy as it used to be. Like, I still, like, follow all the shoe trends and stuff. Just – it's too expensive. The shoes have gotten yeah. ridiculously. I honestly – like, my mom used to buy me shoes as a kid, like, Easter, birthday. Whatever occasion I would get shoes. And she always bought me Jordan. So, what happened What happened when I got – first round, 40 men, irresponsibly, I just went out and, like, bought all the shoes she had bought me as a kid. All the ones she bought me, and that's kind of what snowballed and the whole shoe thing for a couple of years. See, that's what happened. You collected shoes, not baseball cards. There you go. Yeah, it's everything. And yours is probably a lot, a lot more valuable. Than no, because I, I, I collect the Mariners. So my main like PC is I'm a big Mitch Haniger fan. Being married oh, to Mitch Haniger, he's a cool dude. I, I, I see. I've, I've reached out, tried to get Mitch. Like I got my Mitch Haniger signed bat. I mean, I, and it's funny because, like, a lot of people will collect as many, like, autos as they can. I keep mine at 17, keep it with the jersey number. Um, but I, I definitely try to – I'll keep reaching out. His DMs aren't open like yours, so I just have to, like – I just tweet them out. We'll get to you. Uh, we might get back to you. He's, not, he's just hanging out right now. He's hurt. You can be on Twitter too often, though, I think. No, I don't, I don't think so. But uh, not enough to, like, see – you know, right. You'd have, you'd have to time it perfect. Like I would, I see, I see pretty much almost every, every time someone mentions me, I see it. Like, I don't think he, he probably, he won't see it. Well, he gets mentioned all the time. I mean, yeah, yeah. 
I think it would be the perfect time. He, he's hurt right now. He's back at home. He's not with the team. No, but and then Kyle Seeger is my other guy that I really collect. And I collect, like, I mean, I have Edgar, I have Buner, I have Robinson Cano. Like, I, the highest I'll go is, like, $20 for a card. Like, Griffey's going to – if I ever get to the Griffey, like, autograph, he's, like, 150 It sure is, like, 300 So, that, that those are dream cards that, like, someday you hope happens. Um, right. But I, I like Kyle Seeger a lot. It, it's hard not to like him. He's been there forever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, he's having a good year, right? He's having a good year. He's having he's having a pretty productive year. He's doing his average has dropped, but that's Kyle. I mean, he's more of an RBI guy, and the, his glove is his glove is ridiculous. And yeah, it, it's good. And it doesn't seem like it's getting like worse as he gets older because he's getting up there. He's thirty two now, and his yeah. brother, his Corey, is phenomenal. Right. Stud, he's stud. Who who should be a player in the Twins organization that I should be looking at? Like really like investing who's gonna be the next big stud. That's a generational talent. Stud? Uh, yeah. I think if you're looking at I think Royce Lewis has the chance to be an absolute game changing player. He stays up the middle. I mean like I say, he's got five, all five tools just drip with just exceptionalism. Uh, he's very exciting. Um, yeah, he's – if I was a bet. But also I would say Byron Buxton's looked really good offensively lately, and if he can kind of string together some consistency, and I think he could be – I think he could – his whole – whatever, however you want to say it, status could just take off. Well, and it's weird with Buck. Buck is still young. Like, people forget. Yeah, he's like, he's young. been in the show forever. Yeah, and I think the more – he's had some really good at-bats. He looks good at the plate, and obviously his, de- his defense speaks for itself. Um, he's – I think if he stays healthy, you know, he's going to get more consistent everyday bats. You start seeing consistent shapes of pitches, you know, and he's going to custom that, and I think he'll just get better and better and more consistent as he – more he plays. And I think, I think it's pretty it, – very well – it can easily happen for him. Well, it's funny. If you look at that lineup, he's like the oddity. He's like the only one who really has speed and gets on base. Everybody else just hits bombs. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, – yeah. And he's and even then, he can still pop yeah. 20 full year. Like, he he's does. a strong – the, the biggest one that – I took Arias to be my uh, MVP. I thought he might be hitting 400. I thought he'd be one of the guys to be able to do it in 60 games. Seems like he struggled a little bit. I can't believe what Nelson's doing at 40. <laughs> Right. That guy just – he just keeps on hitting. And it yeah. doesn't seem like it's going to go down. It makes you wonder – it makes you wonder. You think – he's been a DH predominantly. How long has he been a full-time DH for? Over the, like, how long? Uh, he never played an outfield in Seattle, really. He didn't have to. He didn't play – he probably played – I don't think he played the outfield in Baltimore. Or he, was it Rangers? Yeah, was so t- 10 years maybe. Long, so – you think him like being in those everyday DH roles for that long has helped him have success at forty? A hundred percent. I think it's the same for like why Edgar has become a, was a Hall of Famer. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it, those kind of guys that just can hit and hit at that that at this that level consistently. It's not like his. Um, it's not like his numbers have gone down at all. They're, they just stay consistent. And yeah, they're the stand- power. His power, I remember watching bagging practice. He did it out of Safeco, and I'm like, how do you do that? He was like a pretty toolsy player when he first came up. Big he arm, speed. Ass dude. Like, he stole bases and stuff. He was a good athlete. Who, your, I was wondering, like, him not being on his feet playing the outfield every day, if right. that's helped him success it, for It probably it, has, because now right. all he has to focus on is hitting. He doesn't have to focus on a defensive pit. Focus on the opponent's lineup at all, like where to be, who's gonna hit what, what do they hit? All he has to focus on is pitcher. So that's his only job. Right. I don't. I don't know if I like the DH because when I played, I always liked to be able to be in the field. I was that oddity till high school. I actually caught. I'm a lefty, and I caught until high school, and then they're like, "You're gonna pitch," and I'm like, "I don't want to pitch." Um. That, but I always, and then in high school, I DH a little bit. DHing just seems so boring. Like you hit. And then you go back into the dugout. See, I 
I like DHing. Oh, I don't think I could do it every day because I think I would just get so absor absorbed in hitting and I wouldn't like, like, I would just get so wrapped up in my own mind, brain. So I kind of need that, like, get my defense to get my mind away from it. Um, but every now and then throughout a season, you get a DH day after, you know, a couple of game stretches, it's, it is quite, it's a joy. So I do appreciate those, but I don't think I could do it day in, day out. I think I just drive myself crazy. And then um, my, my final question before I get, I do these rapid fire questions at the very end. They're fun. But my last like big one is, are you going to play next year? Like what's your, when do you think you're, you're, I don't want to say you're getting old cause you're not old at all, but baseball years are kind of getting up there. Like what, what does the future look like for Lane Adams? I have no idea. Um, it's, a, it's a great question. I mean, that not even from an age standpoint, but like you got just, where's baseball going to be at next year, you know? Well, you got – you have the CBA, so hopefully that they can actually, like, come together. I mean, I thought the whole entire – this whole entire thing to get to COVID was an absolute shit show because the owners wanted basically 60 games. You guys wanted 100. Yeah. Uh, the extended playoffs is kind of cool. I don't really like it. I mean, the Mariners might sneak I'm, in. I'm all for – I'm all for whatever you – whatever – whatever – whatever you want to try out, might as well do it this year. Sample it out this year, you know, get it all out there, see how it goes, throw it all at the wall, see if what sticks, what doesn't. Sure, I'm all for that. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, I'll probably play as long as I can. If it's if this is the last year, that's that's fine. If it's four a year now, two years, three, four years from now, that's also fine. I'm in no – I don't know. I'm pretty at peace with everything, so – I mean, at this point, I'm, like I said, I could be one of those guys at home. There's a lot of talented players right now that are at home, not with anybody. So I look at this as – I'm really thankful for this, and it's kind of put in perspective. Like, if this is the last thing, last time I play or whatever, it's, it's, it's been good. I guess I've enjoyed it. But I'm going to try to keep going, um, and we'll just see. So, I'm like say, whatever happens, happens. No ill will. I've enjoyed it. So, but – Right now, I'm just trying to just have as much fun as possible because I guess getting older makes you have a new perspective on everything. No, definitely. What is all the old? Right? What? All the all the old people were right. <laughs> what has been the hardest thing with like this whole thing? Has it been being away from the wife, not being able to leave, not playing in front of fans. Um, well, being away from my wife. Well, I got to be home. Uh, a lot. That's the first time. First time I've been home since 2008. Did she like want to get rid of you? Yeah, for yeah, most. But that's you know that's all. Uh, so we just got we just built our new house. Got in that a month before, I, or yeah, less than a month before I came out here. So uh, missing that, missing you know, sitting on my back porch with her in the morning, drinking coffee or dog and looking at our pond. That's really peaceful. That's like the highlight of my morning. Um, you know, not, you know, not really not having that competition is daily competition is really difficult here. Um, but we, we do a good job with our games, but it's not the same. You know, you don't look the guys in your clubhouse you're competing against, right, so to say it's, it's not the same as going out with those guys and trying to kick another team's ass. So, um, you kind of you you do miss the competitiveness, the nature of the game. You do miss that a lot, and I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, things that are tough here. But and that's going to vary from guy to guy. You know, people with families, you know, obviously they're going to have be away from them. So it'd probably be up there. Um, but yeah, I think you know being away from my wife and not having that that daily competitiveness. You know, that you wake up for and you. Just long for all day to go out there and compete against you know other you know great players. That's that's kind of uh, that's it's hard not to have that. You know that's what that's why you get up. That's the drilling you get when you go. To, you know you got to stretch at six forty for a seven o'clock game. It's not there. It's not there. So you got to create yourself, and it's just you know, it's just that's tough because you know it's the first time we don't have we haven't had to do that before, and you miss it. You know that's why we play. Hey, you don't have anybody begging you for a ball though. That must be nice. You know you kind of miss that too. <laughs> Actually, I had one more question before we go on the rapid fire ones because I've been waiting to actually ask you this. 
What do you, what's your opinion with the whole Tatis thing? With him swinging 3-0, hitting the grand slam, they're up 7-1. I, I've seen you retweet some of this stuff, like what Johnny Bench said, but, like, as a professional baseball player, like, what's your opinion on that? Because I think you swing 3-0. <sighs> Um, yeah, absolutely. Swing through. I've actually been on, I, I've, I've been on part of it. I've been in a game where we lost, we lost a major league baseball game because of that. Um, because of the unwritten rule, we were in Chicago and it was, we were, I think we scored like seven to two or eight to two, seven to one, we're up six or seven runs or five, six, seven runs in the fourth inning. And I got a walker, somehow got on base. And you know, with the Cubs, 2018 Cubs, you're pretty offensively heavy. And I'm going, I was like, hey, can I be aggressive here on the base? Like, no, 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 shut it down. I'm like, I'm like why? I'm like, ah, they, they just want to shut it down. I'm like, all right, whatever. And then they have scored, and they have scored like nine runs in the eighth inning and beat us 14 to eight or 14 to nine. And then they just come back and beat, they beat the piss out of us. <laughs> it's like, so I'm all for it, man. I mean, it's com- it's it's competition. It's it's uh it's you know this is this is you're competing. You know that though that home run and four RBIs go on the back of his and run score is all going on the back of his uh base- baseball card. Right. Well, and what that kid is doing right now is games where, I've been in blowout games where pitchers come in and still throw me a one zero breaking ball. Like they never take it easy on us. No. Ever. The- ever. And I so think. I'm, what- all for it. And one, it's, and nowadays, guys are throwing harder than ever. They are throwing more breaking balls than ever. So it's really three one counts aren't guaranteed fastballs anymore. Neither are two up. And three oh is probably the only count that's a guaranteed fastball. And even the guys keep molly whopping balls out of the ballpark, they'll probably start flipping breaking balls up three oh too. So especially Not, with what some of these guys can do with their breaking balls. You gotta take your stats where you can get them, whether that's three oh in an eight run game. I'm 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 chewing those up every time. Well, that's what I'm, I said. I, it, this isn't Little League. I mean, if, win. if I'm a fan and I bought a ticket and someone throws a middle, middle dick shot, Fernando Tatis Jr., I want him hitting the ball into orbit. Like, I don't want him seeing – I want him, I want to be entertained. We're entertaining this. And hitting home runs and grand slams with a 21-year-old is pretty entertaining to me. And I advise people to – Appreciate that. Man, that team is entertaining. Yeah, they're fun, man. They're fun. Oh, New so... uniforms, it's like a whole – it's like it's, it's basically what the uniform did. It's like just gave a whole – the uniform, the players, the Tatis. It's just like it's a whole – it's a whole different brand of baseball than it was a year ago for them. Well, I think the thing that MLB is finally doing that I've been pushing for years is they're finally marketing these young – players these young fun players because you got Acuna, Tatis, Vlad Guerrero I mean Mike Trout's I don't want to say old but he's like they decent were decent yeah he, he's okay like he, he's not great or anything I think I think when when Trout's career set it done I think he's the greatest of all time I, I think the Babe Ruth conversation you have to put it out just because Babe Ruth didn't play when you had guys throwing 100 miles an hour and he didn't deal with all the all the stress that Mike Trout has to deal with. I agree with that. All right, so go. Oh, I just looked at the game real quick. All right, so rapid fire questions. It's like seven ones. I just first thing that hits your head. I will judge you on these. All right. All right. What's your favorite food? Prime rib. Ooh, how do you eat it? Medium rare. Good. It's the only way to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> what? Who's your favorite athlete? LeBron James. Uh, favorite ballpark to play in? Uh, Coors. That was Why? tough. Is it because is it the ball just flies there? Honestly, I like the scene. I like the scene. Is it like Coors or, or D.C.? I had a lot of success in D.C. Wrigley's cool. I don't know. That's a tough question for a hard for smart for just ask. Real <laughs> rapid fun. Tough ones. But I was uh, like, I just like the view. I like I like the, the whole thing. I just like playing. It's a pretty ballpark. Uh, beer or wine? Or do you not drink? Wine. I don't drink a lot of beer. I drink. I don't even drink a lot of wine, but wine. Wine. All right. That hey, that question. The last two people didn't drink. I'm like I might throw that question out the door. All Oops. right. What's your, what's your ideal ball game food? 
I'll get my you know, what? Ball game food. Like, if you're going to go watch a big league game, what, what do you and, eat? Oh, probably one of those $13 hot dogs. <laughs> and what's your favorite baseball movie? This, the, that's the mo- this is the most important question. Oh, baseball. This rapid – I got to think on this one. Hold that's on. That's fine. Uh, I was like Bull Durham, I guess. Because I was—that's the only answer. Well, Rookie of the Year is not bad. I like Rookie. Was it Rookie? No, Rookie of the Year, Little Big League, Little Big Minnesota Twins. Yeah, Little, Little Big, Big League's Rookie of the Year. Summer Catch is terrible. I'm, I'm, I like Summer I think, Catch. I think Sandlot's a little overrated. Uh, I hate the Field of Dreams. I hate Field of Dreams. Yeah, I'm um, not a big. Oh, yeah, not yeah, yeah, not a big Kevin Costner guy. Not, not a big fan. Of, but he's Bull Durham. I know. That's what makes no uh, sense. Um, I like Bull Durham. Uh, I say this every week. Bull Durham, Major League. Um, I'm a big fan of For Love of the Game, Kevin Costner again. Even though, like, it's like the sh- – The only movie I like Kevin Costner in is Bull Durham. I don't like For Love of the Game. I don't like uh, – what's the other one? Field of Dreams. What's, uh, Field of Dreams. I don't like that one. I don't, I don't even watch it. Like, I was like, I tried, but I ain't watching it. <laughs> because I, because I, I really like him in, I really like him in uh, Bull Durham. Uh, that movie is, it's so I, great. Why? Maybe because, I don't know. I, I really mean, is that movie, like, does it hit spot on what minor league baseball kind of is like? <laughs> I imagine it's very accurate. Uh, back then. Back then, as far as, yeah. I think, I, maybe that's it. Maybe it's just so, it's so authentic that. I, I mean, appreciate it, it. it brought, like, fans back to minor league baseball because it, it was dying. Yeah. And... It's, it kind of tells you – it kind of shows you the the community of minor league baseball, too, and kind of the, you know – You get that one lady how, that how chases you around. Or him getting released, him getting brought in just to help somebody. You know, that it, that really does happen. So I think that's that could be a reason why I like it. But I don't like Kevin Costner. That movie's so that quotable. Kevin Costner. All right, and then the final thing is the floor is yours. Do you have any teammates you need to want to pump up? Anything you need to promote? The floor is yours, brother. Yeah, I want to promote this. I was on a podcast in February, and someone at ad, and it was hosted by two or three guys. They all asked me three times, or they asked me. No, it's two different podcasts. And they asked me, who's your breakout player of the year? And I said, Max Free. And I just would like – I'm bragging about that because he's having a great year. And I just want that out there. I called that in February. So, if there's any GM jobs open, you know, just let me know. So, no, uh, Max Free, I like to give a shout out to him. He's been killing it. Uh, he's a great dude. He's a relentless worker. He's real, you know, real fine with what he does. Uh, it's really, I kind of see him go through some ups and downs in his young career, but seeing him put it all together. Uh, it's been great to watch, not as a fan of baseball, but as a friend and seeing, you know, another friend have success for, uh, in his field of line of work has been a really, really fun thing to watch, and hopefully he keep keep it going. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been awesome. Hey, man, thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. And then people can find you on Twitter, right? At L.A. Swiftness. Yeah. Such a LA. good nickname. Yeah. And then yeah. – you guys, you can find us at Just Mitchin on Twitter, um, on YouTube, and on uh, Spotify. I don't think we're on Apple Podcasts. Just yet. Uh, But anyways, everybody have a good one. Thank you so much.